again. This is Tony Okamoto and Michelle Kane, and, and we're here with Traffic Talk. Yay! Or no, <laughs> we're stuck in traffic, and we're gonna make use of our time by answering Q and A for you. So we're gonna go to Instagram, where we've already asked people to ask us questions, and uh, we'll start with Kelson eighty three, who says, "Can you recommend a cookbook for getting in all vital nutrients?" Uh, there's a lot. Forks out of forks over knives. They have a cookbook. It's good. Jack Norris has some books on vegan health and nutrition. Mm -hmm. Um, there's a ton of, I would just go to, honestly, I would go to Amazon and type in healthy vegan cookbook mm -hmm. and there will be like 400 there for you to choose from. I guess that's why they're asking what our favorite is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what are your favorite healthy cookbooks? To be honest, you should be asking us the unhealthy. Yeah, like, ask like, us. What do you like? Your fried cookbooks. To be no, like. um, choosing raw uh, is a really good cookbook that that uses a lot of obviously whole foods and raw ingredients. Um, Kathy Patalski, Happy Healthy Vegan, good cookbook. Uh, there's a lot. We're. I'm gonna actually think about this more and leave in the comments below. <clears throat> some really good recommendations for healthy vegan cookbooks so check down there um and also check out jack norris's cook i'm um, sorry uh nutrition book vegan for life it's really good if you're looking for just straight up nutrition information uh next question comes from lee avocado oh, i love that name <laughs> what if you have a pet like a dog or something so you have to give him dog food equals meat. Would you have, or do you have a pet? Team dog over here, team cat over there. Mm -hmm. uh, my dog eats vegan food. He eats V-Dog, v-dog.com. You can order it online and it is nutritionally balanced. It's packed with lots of yumminess. He loves it. Uh, vet approved and it's, yeah. Did you say it? you can order it online and you it's can free order shipping? It online. It's no longer free shipping. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But um, it's vegan owned and operated, so it's an amazing company to support. But there's lots of other brands that also carry vegan dog food, like Natural Balance has one. And you can get that at <clears throat> like um, Pet Food Express pet, pet and stuff. Food stores. Yeah. Uh, so there's lots of options for vegan dog foods. Um, dogs are omnivores, just like humans, so they can thrive on both an omnivorous diet, but also a plant-based diet, unlike cats, which are obligate carnivores. So yeah, I definitely I could encourage you guys to check out vegan dog food options for uh, your pups. And uh, for cats, I know all types of different vegans who choose um, the different options. You could either not have a cat if you are against purchasing meat products, period. Uh, you could do what I do and feed your cat meat food. There are lots of different options for your cats, but all of them include buying meat or not having a cat. Um, yeah, you can look up. There's lots of great uh, veterinarians and vegan veterinarians out there that talk a lot about these things. So I think vegan vet dot something, but look up the vegan vet, our mighty May, um, and you can find a lot of good resources there. And then... Um, just always adopt. Remember to always adopt because then you're at least saving a life and giving a home to an animal that wouldn't otherwise have a good home. And yeah. Next question comes from Daph Sturge. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love a good witty comeback to plants have feelings too. <laughs> yeah, we get that one a lot. I would love a witty comeback from that too. I'm sure Colleen Patrick Pedro yeah, has one. She does, and I've heard her talk about it in in some of her lectures. And she has, I forget her witty comebacks, but they're kind of like, yeah, really cool. You sound stupid. Uh, <laughs> I don't think that's what she no, says. No, that's not, I'm sorry. That's that's not what she says exactly. But that's like, like this is a ridiculous. This is a, thing. This is a ridiculous. Obviously, plants don't have a nervous center, central so, nervous yeah. system. They and, can't process pain the way that. Yeah, but uh, something that she does say is that you can answer by saying, um, you know, that's not something that I know a lot about. Oh, I know. I think but, I know what she usually says. I think she usually says, like, do you really think that 
plants feel pain to like put the question back on them because usually when people are asking that question they're asking it to try and trigger you or to try and like stump you or make you feel stupid when really the question in itself is very ridiculous like very few of us really believe plants feel pain so when you put the question back that way like do you really think that plants feel pain it puts kind of the burden on responding to that to the person who asked the question and almost always people will be like no I was just trying to you know mess with you <laughs> I think that's what she says but she also says what I was saying uh Sorry. Is, that, that's okay. uh, is that you can say, you know, I don't know a lot about that, but I do know that animals feel pain and I don't want to contribute to their suffering. So I'm not going to. And I think that that explanation is just so genuine and heartfelt and makes them understand you better. Uh, so that's what I like to do when someone asks me a question like that. I just like to say, you know, I, I don't know about plants having feelings, but I do know that animals feel and I don't want them to feel uh, pain. Yeah. And I mean, honestly, if we were out here to advocate for plants who feel pain, you would want to be vegan anyway, because it takes far fewer plants to feed a vegan than to feed someone eating meat. Because think of all the plants that have to die in order to feed the animals, to grow the animals to then kill the animals and eat them. So lower on the food chain, saving more plants too. The next question comes from Lena Stana. <laughs> You're rocking it with these things. <laughs> I feel like a, a teacher on the first day of school who's just doing a very poor job with everyone's names. Okay, what's the hardest part of the transition from vegetarian to vegan? I think that's different for everybody. I know a lot of people who had a hard time giving up cheese. I know a woman who had a hard time giving up candy bars. I know people, when we did our yogurt video recently, mm -hmm. I heard from a lot of people who said that they had a really, really, or are having a really, really hard time giving up yogurt. Um, they've given up cheese and everything else, but are having a really difficult time giving, yo giving up yogurt. So I think it's really dependent on the individual. Yeah, I mean, the, the longer you do it, the easier it's going to get. And For just sure. try new things whenever you see them. Um, and it will just keep getting easier and easier. I mean, the other hard thing is just dealing with the people around you, right? So if people are going to constantly be ragging on you or you go to family dinners and you feel like you're the weird one that's an inconvenience. But uh, we have, like, tons of tips on how to handle those situations. So, um yeah, stay tuned for those for those videos and resources. Also, watch Vegucated, really awesome documentary that follows a few people who are going vegan for the first time, and shows their experiences and their fears and what's their their struggles. And I think all of them are still vegan to this day. So, <laughs> yeah. next question is from Lil Gaunt, who says, um, "How do I not crave animal products?" With that. If you have a specific thing that you're craving, there are a lot of vegan options on the market right now, more than ever before, and likely there's something that you are craving in a vegan version. So if you want mac and cheese, or if you want pizza, or if you want chips, um, I know that I I have the, the, the weirdest cravings for um, like bagged chips. And Earth Balance made a really great cheddar chip and a sour cream and onion chip that are really good. On point. And um, for candy bars, there are the Go Max Go bars. And then we recently tried the Eli's. Eli's Earth Bars. Eli's Earth Bars that are really delicious. So uh, if you're craving something, just Google a vegan version of it and you'll likely find something. Yeah. And if you, and if you try something and it's not at all like what you remember don't give up keep trying the different options that you find out there or look up a recipe to create your own because uh, there's a lot of good stuff but there's also a lot of kind of nasty vegan products out there so just don't give up and keep trying and um, yeah you'll find an amazing version that will satisfy every craving okay this is a really good question from Jen Slim 88 Hi, do you transition gradually or just go for it? I'm currently veggie and I'm debating going vegan. I was going to try gradually introducing more vegan meals, but I'm not sure it would be the best to just go cold turkey, as they say. Uh, I have an answer for that. 
Sorry, You're right. I have an opinion about go for it, girl. One of the hardest, one of the most taxing things on our brain that we do every day is make decisions. So if you're constantly trying to decide at every meal, like, oh, should I choose the vegan one this time? Or like, should I wait till, like, it's just going to drain a lot of mental energy from you. Whereas if you just are like, all right, I'm doing this. I'm going all in. Um, I'm going to like find new recipes and try new things and go shopping at the store and clear out the stuff from from my refrigerator. It's just, I think that that's going to be a much easier way to just jump in it without feeling stressed about it because it just becomes easy there's no decision it's like okay I'm making this today because it's cruelty free and amazing <laughs> I have a different opinion I did it the complete opposite and it took me like six years to become vegan and I I gave up things in phases I said okay I'm not gonna eat meat anymore and I'm not gonna eat um I'm not gonna drink cow's milk anymore and I'm not gonna bake with eggs anymore and I did these big phases and it worked for me and I I never felt like it was too hard because I was giving up everything at one time um, I know people who've gone vegan overnight and that has worked for them but the one time I tried and failed I was really discouraged so I tried a different approach and it worked much better for me yeah. to, to go in phases and um what were you going to say? Oh, yeah. No, totally. I think that the, it really depends on the individual a lot. Um, I think regardless, you should pick up some great resources like books about how to go vegan. I think How to Be Vegan is one by Elizabeth Castoria. Read some books like that and it really breaks down uh, how to read labels, what to look out for, mm -hmm. like amazing vegan food substitutes, like veganizing your wardrobe and and cosmetics and it can seem overwhelming at one, at first but just immerse yourself in that information and it'll make daily choices much much easier uh, so we're going th we're in the bay bridge right now so it's a little bit dark uh another thing that uh, other ways you can do are sorry other ways you can go about it are trying um vegan be trying to be vegan three days of the week all day long and seeing how that goes for you and then becoming vegan four days a week or five days a week and just seeing how well you do. Uh, and there are people yeah. who are vegan before six and... I think the consensus is there's no one right way to yeah, do it. No right one. Tap right into way. like what you believe and what you feel like you are able to do. And I think you'll know like deep down like... I'm ready to do this, I want to do this, and I really have the resources, but I just haven't made the commitment yet, then I feel like you're ready to jump in. If you're more, like, really scared that there's not going to be enough to eat and that you don't know how to do it and you just haven't, like, um, if that is just going to be really difficult, then, yeah, pick a few days a week or just start dipping your toes in and it'll just get easier and easier. But, yeah, I'd love to hear how it goes. <laughs> okay, is there a vegan cheese that tastes like real cheese? Oh, I really like Miyoko's Kitchen, I think. Um, that tastes like real cheese, but that's artisan cheese. If you're looking for a good cheese, I, I recommend the Chow cheese. Field roast, Field roast Chow, Chow cheese. is super good. And we tried that provolone uh, by Follow Your by Heart. Follow Your Heart, that was pretty good. Yeah, um, and Dea is one that's very commonly used yeah. in restaurants. And, and um, it melts. And it can be used for like grilled cheese and pizza. Uh, there's a lot of cheeses out there, and that market is exploding right now. Um, a lot of people's palates are just different, and so one person might love one and another might hate it. So I would just say keep an eye on what's out there, pick up the new products that, that you find at the store, and try and see what you think. But it's there's a lot of really exciting forward momentum, and the cheeses out there that are vegan taste a lot like the cheeses we grew up eating days I'd say getting pretty darn close I'm looking for another question it is so beautiful out here by the way yeah it is really beautiful Sunset. I wish I wish I could show I don't know you how guys. to show <laughs> yeah. oh. well anyway behind us is the city of San Francisco with the sun setting and it's really pretty um let's see I know we've been going at this video for a while now, but I, we definitely are interested to hear, is this type of video something that you'd be interested in seeing again? Like more of these Q&As? Uh, 
let us know in the comments. Oh, okay. This one is a good question. It's more of a statement, but this is something that I deal with regularly. Um, it's about veganism being the expensive student. Hashtag broke college student. Ha ha. That question is made for you. That question <laughs> is made for me. I run a blog called Plant Based on a Budget, and I focus on um, budget eating and veganism and provide resources for people who are in a very limited income or have very limited income, a very tight food budget. And it can definitely be done. It requires some meal planning and some meal preparations, but ultimately it's way, it's a way better investment of your time and your money and your energy uh, to make your own food than to purchase fast food from the um, from the from a fast food restaurant. I hear a lot that it's so easy to just go to McDonald's and buy off the dollar menu, but if you're purchasing three meals a day from various fast food restaurants and you're buying, let's say, three things per meal, you're spending nine dollars a day on food for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. You can spend $25 using a meal plan that I that I have created for you uh, and eat seven days a week with desserts included. And that's, I think, a way better deal. Your body will thank you and the food is very delicious, if I do say so myself. Your food is really good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, so I definitely suggest meal planning. If you go to plantbasedonabudget.com, there are lots of tips and um, recipes. We just and... made, uh, we're just working on a video now making a Mexican rice dish mm -hmm. that is one of Tony's most popular recipes mm -hmm. ever on her blog, and it's super inexpensive. It makes a huge filling dish that can yeah. feed, like, multiple people. It costs, like, a dollar. Yeah. So look out for that recipe. Yeah, and something like, I, I know a lot of people say, well, poor people should, sh you shouldn't tell poor people that they should eat beans and rice, but I... I eat beans and rice, and I really love beans and rice, and it's a complete protein, and there are so many ways you can spice it up. You can you can make um, Mexican rice and beans. You could make, um, like, a with rice, you could do a stir-fry or um, Stick it bean in salad, like burrito. burritos. There's so many ways to make different delicious meals out of um, beans, rice, lentils, vegetables, tofu. Okay, Sorry. pause for a second though. You guys, we just made it through San Francisco rush hour traffic and it was pleasant. Yeah, so thank, thank you. you guys. That was <laughs> awesome. I'm gonna, um, oh wait, sorry, never mind. I was gonna try to show you how beautiful it is, but I'm really bad at the phone it's business. <laughs> Um, the other thing to consider is when you're eating healthfully and making a lot of food for yourself, you're going to ultimately save so much money on healthcare costs. So if you don't have to end up in a hospital paying for heart surgery or triple bypass, whatever, um, you're ultimately going to be saving a lot of money. So choose plants. Yay. I think we should wrap it up now. Okay. So yeah, we're out of traffic, thankfully, and we're very appreciative of having you ask questions be our companions <laughs> through this um let us know if this is something that you like we are in the car often we would we would invest in something to stabilize the camera for you yeah sorry guys <laughs> um, i did my best holding it yeah, but definitely leave your questions down below if you have other questions that you'd like to, us to cover, cover. We'll start compiling them and just working our way through them. Um, yeah. Uh, uh, Don't forget to subscribe. You can find more of our videos over at veganoutreach.org and worldofvegan.com. All right, you guys. <laughs> we'll see you later. Have fun. Bye. Bye.